Are you ready to embark on an epic adventure with the third season of Dr. Stone? Buckle up, because episode 1 is already here and it's fast-paced, exhilarating, and packed with all your favorite characters. In the hot air balloon ride over Ishigami village, Ryu Sui, Chrome, and Senku share a touching moment as they reminisce about the beauty of the village. But it's not long before Ryu Sui starts dreaming about owning it all, mountains, seas, everything. The villagers welcome Senku back with open arms, and the episode dives into Senku's backstory, recounting how he woke up after the petrification beam hit. As we venture deeper into the episode, we get a sense of what the season has in store for us. Senku and his team are on a mission to save Tsukosa, and their journey will take them to the other side of the world in search of the origin of the petrification beam. But they can't do it alone, they need a captain to steer the ship. Ryu Sui steps up to the plate, and the team sets their sights on oil, which they will use to power their journey. The episode is not without its comedic moments, as Ryu Sui is left disappointed by the primitive fish dishes served at the feast in his honor. But he's not one to give up so easily, he encourages the team to find oil and food from the sky as soon as possible. And with Kohaku, Chrome, Yukio, and the backpack cell phone, they set off to survey the terrain and make a map of the new world. Kohaku questions whether they can find oil in the sky, to which Senku explains that nothing is impossible when you have science on your side. And that's exactly what they plan to use to locate the Sogora oil fields, by surveying the terrain and making a map of the new world. But hold on, while everyone's focused on oil and maps, Ryu Sui has his sights set on something else entirely, food. Spotting a herd of wild animals, he's ready to go all out and indulge in some meaty goodness. And boy, do they indulge. Yukio takes down a goat and promises to make sure none of the meat goes to waste. But before we can even process the killing, the scene turns into a Minecraft-like rendition, reminding us that anything is possible with science. As they continue their journey, the team takes a moment to check on their progress, and boy is it impressive. The Minecraft-like cartography is not only stunning but also extremely detailed. And while the villagers marvel at it, Ryu Sui can't stop laughing about the amount of information they can gather from the sky. But the real tear-jerking moment comes when an old woman who cooked the dreadful fish dishes cries out of happiness. She realizes how science and agriculture can change their lives for the better and finally bring an end to the food shortage that plagued Ishigami village, and this is where the real journey begins, with the need for agriculture and growing their own food. Senku, with his evil grin, already has plans in mind. Agriculture will lead to a food market, and where there's a market, there's currency, which means filling Ryu Sui's pockets. The two share a laugh as they plan for the future. But Kohaku isn't quite sure if Ryu Sui is benevolent or evil, calling him worse than Jen. As they move forward, the team searches for seeds to grow their own food. And Kohaku spots the field of golden foxtail, aka wheat. Ryu Sui realizes the potential of this and immediately wants bread, the ultimate preserved food. And so begins their adventure of growing and harvesting wheat, all in the hopes of making the best biscuits they can. And with Ryu Sui's list of exotic bread goods and Kohaku's hilarious naming of special attack moves. We see Senku and his team facing the challenge of creating preserved food for the winter, and the solution is to grow wheat on the Kanto Plains. But how will they do it? Ryusui proposes that they can make all the fancy food they need, but Chrome reminds them that they don't have enough wheat. The solution? Agriculture, of course. Kohaku is all in, but Yukio and Senku are already planning where to establish the farms. And this is where the fun begins. Meanwhile, Taiju and Jen are busy moving statues out of the way, with Yuzuriha, Magma, and Ginro putting them back together. The group discusses how many statues they have and whether they should wake some of them up to help them. Nikki is quick to point out that more people mean more mouths to feed, and they need to be careful. As Taiju complains about the lack of food, Kohaku arrives and announces that they're setting up a constant food source. Taiju gets to work on creating fields, with Magma and Yo Uei grumbling about how hot it is. But Nikki reminds them that this is for their own food, and Yuzuriha even makes Jen a sun hat out of wheat. Jen gets excited and infers that the hat is the crown of the leader of agriculture, which prompts Yuzuriha to realize his game. She suggests that Yo and Magma should compete to be the best wheat grower, and the two are seen working hard and staring each other down. The episode takes a touching turn when Taiju talks about his parents' death and his determination to help bring back the other families. He swears to make a mountain of food that will revive the entire world. We see the wheat fields finally sprouting, with Taiju's progress amazing Yo and Magma. But the real surprise comes when Senku teaches them how to test the soil's condition using morning glories and paper strips. Senku praising Taiju's work on farming, but let's be honest, we're all just here for the Minecraft-like animation style. It's like watching our favorite game come to life in anime form. 
And speaking of Taiju, he's finally awarded with the coveted straw hat, establishing him as the leader of the farming team. Move over, Luffy, there's a new straw hat in town. As if that wasn't enough, our beloved trio, Senku, Ryusui, and Chrome, made their grand entrance in a hot air balloon, congratulating Taiju and the gang on their massive first step towards food security. It's like a scene straight out of a Jules Verne novel. But the real highlight of the episode is when Senku attempts to bake bread for the first time. Let's just say that his bread-making skills leave a lot to be desired, as he pulls out a burnt mess from the oven. But to the surprise of our scientific trio, the villagers of Ishigami village absolutely love it. Senku and Ryu Sui, being the responsible scientists that they are, quickly realize that this bread will kill everyone and they need to awaken a professional chef ASAP. Cue the Age of Exploration arc. All in all, Dr. Stone Season 3 Episode 1 is a rollercoaster ride of excitement, laughter, and burnt bread. Ryu Sui continues to steal the spotlight with his wit and charm, and the episode does a great job of moving the plot forward without ever feeling rushed. Can't wait to see what scientific shenanigans our gang will get up to next. Thanks for watching, drop a comment below and let us know what you thought of the episode. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more thrilling Dr. Stone content.